Hello, and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm County Commissioner Al French, and my guests today are Utilities Director Kevin Cook and Chris Major, Education Coordinator for the Regional Solid Waste System. Welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. The past few months have been extremely busy for Spokane County Utilities Department as we take over the management of the Regional Solid Waste System. But before we delve into that, why don't we walk through what led us up to this point? Sure. First, we have to go back, Al, about 23 years to the formation of the current system that included all of the jurisdictions uh, within Spokane County. And uh, together, it was decided that the uh, waste to energy facility would be built as well as two transfer stations. And uh, the decision was made that the city of Spokane would finance those improvements and uh, at the end of the agreement would, would own those facilities. Well, rolling forward about 23 years, we get to, uh, to now, uh, actually uh, those agreements that were uh, interlocal agreements signed back 23 years ago will come to an end on November 17th, a week from today. And uh, so over the course of the past year to year and a half, we've been looking at all the uh, various options available for the regional system. And uh, at this juncture, uh, we're ready to go forward with 12 of the jurisdictions in the new regional system. So it's important to point out that uh, in the original agreements, it was anticipated that there would be a time and an opportunity for us to come back and take a look at how we wanted to handle municipal waste in the region for the next 20 years. Exactly. Great. And uh, I would add that about a year uh, ago, but last summer, summer of 2013, uh, we started looking in earnest at the various options. And uh, that's what's brought us to today. And, and so the idea was to continue to operate a regional system. So what are the benefits of that? Well, obviously, when you have all of the tons in the region pulled together in the same system, uh, it affords you uh, uh, efficiencies in terms of uh, volume uh, and uh, you're able to keep the cost per ton low for your disposal and uh, so that was one of our main focuses was trying to keep the system together trying to uh, make a customer friendly system that would uh, continue with the same level of service that has been uh, provided to all customers over the past two decades and well, I would just agree with Kevin that I think that it's very important talking about customer service to continue that consistency of the programs that you offer. I mean, what's acceptable in recycling and the composting program and what isn't. And so um, keeping a, a coherent system together um, provides that for the students or for the, the citizens. And then just looking at the environment too. Um, our waste goes to a waste energy plant when we look at landfills previously to that, the landfills were built right on top of our sole source of drinking water, the aquifer, and, and how something had to be done, and then choosing a waste energy facility so that we could take care of our trash in our own backyard, but um, do it in an environmentally responsible way. Well, and I, I know that uh, I can remember back in February of 2011 where we held a two-day regional summit on municipal waste. And we had elected officials from throughout the county come together and talk about what does the future of uh, municipal solid waste look like uh, for the disposal of that. And so after over the last three years, we've been engaged in this conversation about what kind of governance structure, what kind of uh, partnerships would be in place, how, what would the system look like? And so now we're here. So what does the system look like? What, what, what do we look like for the next 20 years? Well, in, a, uh, in many regards, the system looks very much like it has. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, many people will not see any difference in the, the way that solid waste is handled in Spokane County. Uh, we do have 12 of the jurisdictions that are participating, including unincorporated Spokane County. And those include the City of Airway Heights, the City of Deer Park, City of Medical Lake, City of Millwood, of course the City of Spokane, Fairchild Air Force Base, uh, Spokane County unincorporated areas, and then also Fairfield, Latos, Spangle, Rockford, and Waverly. 
the, uh, the cities that have opted to go uh, with their own systems uh, are the city of Spokane Valley, the city of Liberty Lake, and the city of Cheney. So those three cities will be doing their own solid waste plans and will be handling their solid waste separately from the system. So what stays the same and what's changing, you know, from the customer standpoint? Well, what stays the same, and I, and I think this would be a good time to mention that Chris Major is uh, an employee of the city of Spokane and will continue working for the county on the various programs that are offered through the system. And so that's certainly uh, not going to change under the, the, uh, the new system or the new management. Uh, as the county takes over, the county will continue to work hand in hand with the city of Spokane to provide all of those uh, peripheral services, mm -hmm. uh, public, ed public education, public outreach uh, that have been so successful in, uh, in the previous decades. Uh, the transfer stations that will be owned by Spokane County will be the Valley Transfer Station and uh, North Spokane. Uh, also referred to as the Colbert Transfer Station. Those two transfer stations will continue to provide service uh, as they have in the past, seven days a week. The hours will change. We are going to an 8.30 to 4 p.m. Uh, schedule seven days a week. And the household hazardous waste will be accepted on weekends from 8.30 to 4. So that's the main change uh, is the hours of operation. But other than that, uh, users of the transfer stations and uh, uh, those wishing to use the, the other services provided through the system will, will not see any change. So if the, uh, my involvement with getting rid of my trash involves me pushing my uh, cart out to the curb and, and longing for somebody to come pick it up and get rid of my waste, that's going to continue to happen and there'll be a seamless transition in the customer probably won't even know anything about. Correct. That's correct. And if they want to self-haul, again, Kevin mentioned the hours for the two transfer stations that the county will run, and then the waste energy facility transfer station will keep the same hours and services. The same hours that have historically been, yeah. been going. So the, the waste to energy transfer station, if you will, is open from 7.30, 730 until to 5, five. seven yeah. days a week. So you did a great job of listing the uh, cities that are going to be part of the system. So what if you live in a city that isn't part of the regional system? Uh, what might they expect? Well, uh, I would refer folks within those cities to, con to, to the, uh, the contact numbers for those cities to, uh, to get any answers to questions relative to uh, public outreach and education and, and those other services. Uh, the, just to list the numbers briefly, the city of Spokane Valley, you would contact the city at 509-921-1000 or www.spokanevalley.org. The city of Liberty Lake, uh, their contact number would be 509-755-6700 and their website is www.libertylake. Dot wa, dot gov. And then the City of Cheney Public Works Department has a number of 509-498-9293 and their website is www.cityofcheney.org. And uh, so those would be the key contacts for, uh, for folks in those cities. So for the residents that live in those cities that aren't part of the regional system, will they still be able to use the transfer stations either up in Colbert or in Spokane Valley? Absolutely. Our uh, county transfer stations and the waste energy facility are going to remain open to all county residents. So there's also an extremely active education program that will be part uh, of the county system and so uh, participating jurisdictions in that educational program Yes, they can continue to count on those. And just to give you an idea of some of the things that we've done and what the system has done for the last 20 years, uh, we offer programs to school groups on, and again, the message is mainly waste reduction, you know, how to reduce your waste through recycling and composting. So we do programs in the schools, 
Um, I go speak to community and civic organizations. We have a very active group of the master composters, recyclers. It's probably one thing that we're most well known for. So every year we have anywhere between 25 and 30 graduates of that program. They learn how to compost organic materials and how to be great recyclers. And then in exchange for taking the class, they give back 40 hours of community service. And so that's why we're at events like the county fair and home garden shows, is that we're able to use those volunteers. And last year, I think we had over 25 events, over 1,300 volunteer hours. And um, it's a great way to spread the word in, throughout the community. And then other programs that we offer, we have an event recycling program. Uh, we partner with Hoopfest and Bloomsday and, and sporting events and fun runs. Anybody can check out for free recycling containers that they can use to collect recyclables at their events. We also offer free business consultations. So if businesses want to learn how to maybe save money by recycling more and throwing less garbage away, they can contact us and we're able to help them with that as well. So I'm a teacher in the community <clears throat> and uh, I want to learn more about what's available. How do I get in touch with you? All right. Well, you can either call me, phone number, which is 509-625-6521. can also reach me by email, kmajor at spokanecity.org, and then also via the Spokane County Solid Waste.org website. So as a region, over the last several years, <clears throat> we've invested a lot of uh, time and energy and education about recycling. It's become a very uh, significant part of our waste reduction program and I believe uh, Waste Management has uh, constructed a recycling uh, facility right next to the waste energy plant. Um, that operation has been going now for a couple years and has contributed quite a bit to the re waste reduction that we've experienced as a region, which is critical because obviously you want to recycle because it's just uh, you know being friendlier to the planet and you know you're you're getting uh, being able to reuse those materials uh, uh, as opposed to putting them in incineration or putting them into a landfill and stuff. So, but that education about recycling, y you start that program at a very young age, and in fact, I think tomorrow night. We're going to have uh, some uh, kids coming forward with some artwork for us. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Every year, um, November 15th is America Recycles Day. Mm -hmm. And so for the last 15 or so years, we have sponsored a art contest for students in Spokane County called Spokane Recycles. And the students that have become finalists with their artwork, they'll be recognized at the Board of County Commissioners meeting um, their artwork is currently on display at River Park Square, and one lucky student will have their artwork made into a poster that will be available through distribution um, to businesses and schools and government offices. Now that's so November, well on. November 12th, isn't it, that uh, that yes. presentation is made to the, to the board? Yeah, so, and, that's great. And as I remember in past years, we've actually taken some of the artwork for, for the uh, uh, for the children and actually made calendars out of them, as I remember, yes. and stuff. Yeah. That's not necessarily what we're going to be doing this year. Is that right? Or are we going to be well, developing we're not gonna, a cannula? Well, yeah, we're not going to have the opportunity to do okay. the calendar this year. Okay. But we are going to do a poster, and then we'll reevaluate uh, re the calendar for mm -hmm. next year. Yeah. But it, go ahead. I was going to say, with regard to recycling, uh, I should have mentioned when you asked what's different at the transfer stations, uh, one thing that's a, a great change is single stream recycling. That is to say that instead of going to the uh, transfer stations with your recyclables and, and splitting them up into the various receptacles, now you just take them in and, and put them in the same bin. And uh, then that's handled at the smart center as far as the separation of those recyclable materials. Excellent, excellent. So Chris, I was wondering just a minute ago when we were talking about the volume of recycling. What percentage are we at now as far as the, the percent that's recycled? Well, the last numbers that we have from Department of Ecology, um, Spokane County, and this is something they can be very proud of, we have about a 55% percent 
recycling diversion rate. And that is well above uh, the national average and even above the state average. Wow. So we can do that without uh, you know, legislating, making people recycle or compost. That's all voluntary, which is a tremendous thing. And it's going in the right direction because I know with the new comprehensive solid waste plan for Spokane County, we have sent 65% goal for the year 2020. And so that's gonna mean a commitment to more recycling and diversion from businesses and schools and hospitals, but I do think we can do it. We can, we can. I think we can. Well, and obviously the recycling is much um, less expensive to the system and to the customer than it is to try and dispose or incinerate and stuff. So it benefits not only the region, it benefits the environment, but it also benefits the ratepayer because we're able to keep those costs down. And, and the when I mentioned earlier about the fact that we're going to be about $100 a ton at the gate fee, I mean, that is um, a very, very competitive rate compared to other jurisdictions throughout the state. In fact, I think uh, King County is something like $150 a ton for getting rid of their uh, waste. And there's another county in, uh, in the state of Washington that's closer to $170 a ton. So we are very competitive with other jurisdictions, but we're constantly looking at how can we be more efficient? How can we kind of keep control of that uh, cost to the customer? Uh, because the system really is a rate payer based system. And as you indicated earlier, uh, we cannot, by state law, make a profit. We can only charge enough to cover our cost. So the way that we improve the system for our ratepayers is reduce cost, and that's constantly looking for efficiencies, which you know both the city and the county have invested a lot of time in being able to accomplish. So, for the benefit of our viewers, could you just kind of repeat? Uh, some of the programs that you offer from an educational standpoint uh, out there because again uh, a more informed user will make the system better for all of us. Yeah very true. So I do go into the schools and that is preschool up through college and talk about waste reduction. Do everything from hands-on activities like making recycled paper to talking about composting and playing with worms from a worm bin. <laughs> And uh, so those are great, fun programs that are available to um, all of the schools that are participating in the system. And we'll also have the Master Composter Recycler Program that citizens can also um, sign up for, and we do those programs in the spring. And so we can take up to 25 to 30 people to do that. And just talking about cons consulting with business waste reduction and our event recycling programs. Great. So I've enjoyed our discussion about the uh, new Spokane County Regional Solid Waste System, and I hope our viewers have found the information useful, but we've run out of time. So Utilities Director Kevin Cook and Education Coordinator Chris Major, I wanna thank you for joining me today. Thank you. And for helping our customers out there understand uh, the system as we take it over and continue to provide good quality service for ratepayers. Again, uh, I'm County Commissioner Al French, and I want to thank you for joining us for Spokane County Spotlight.